Hey, Flimsy Lunch Tray here, and welcome to our Saturday edition video and World of Worships. We're going to be featuring the Tier 8 Pan Asian Destroyer, the Sea and Yang. Now, I should be able to do somewhat decent with this uh, review and doing our upgrade commander build at the Sea and Yang because I just spent 15 minutes talking and not recording any video, only recording audio. So, uh, typical Flimsy move there. So, um, we're going to be looking at an overview of the ship. We'll look at the modules, the upgrades, consumables, and uh, the sweet spot, the uh, commander build. And I'll give you my thoughts, impressions, and maybe some different uh, options you can take in running the CN Yang. So I'm talking about the CN Yang. Um, we first need to discuss what type of destroyer is she. In World of Warships, there are three uh, different types of destroyers. You have uh, gunboat destroyers, you have torpedo destroyers, or you have hybrid destroyers, which is a mix of both, um, meaning that they perform well, relatively decent or well in both roles. Um, and that is where you find the Xi and Yang at. Uh, she's the best of both worlds in that. Um, and that is because she has four uh, of these 127 millimeter turrets, uh, have a reload time of 3.3 seconds. And then she's got these uh, quintuple torpedo tubes. Um, that really put the hurt on uh, cruisers, battleships, and aircraft carriers. They cannot hit destroyers because they are deep water torpedoes. And as I talk about um, the C and Yang, um, if you are familiar with playing the Benson, the Tier 8 American destroyer, um, she plays really similar. Um, of course, there's differences, um, like the Benson has an additional turret. Uh, up here, you don't have that on Xin Yang. You got some more uh, AA. Um, she also has tor 10 torpedoes, but they're deep. Uh, here, they're deep armored torpedoes. On Benson, they're just your standard torpedoes. So there's a lot of similarities there, but there's also some differences. So if you played the Benson, you know how she handles. Um, you're going to be right at home uh, with the Xin Yang. So let's go ahead and look at the modules. So looking at the modules, you have Again, these 127 millimeter turrets, a reload time of 3.3 seconds with a 108 degree turn time of 5.3 seconds. And then you have uh, a Hall B upgrade. So with Survivability Expert, uh, you get up to 18,700 um, hit points, which is fantastic. You also get better AA, as well as a slightly better maneuverability. Um, so I always recommend going for the Hall upgrade first, and I'll recommend that same here with C and Yang. And then torpedoes is what I go for next. The stock torpedoes are eight kilometer torpedoes, which is really pain when you are bottom tier facing tier 10 uh, ships with a lot of, you know, radar, you know, radar on the battleship, radar on destroyers, radar on cruisers. And so when you get to the upgraded torpedoes, they run 9.5 kilometers. They have a slightly better reload time. They do a bit more damage, but instead of being 61 knots, they drop down to 59 knots. Um, so that's kind of the, the trade-off there, but definitely want to go for the upgraded torpedoes after getting the hull. And then the gunfire control system. Your main battery firing range is 11.4 stock, and then you get up to 12.5 kilometers, which is, which is helpful. I mean, you saw how many fires we were setting in yesterday's battle, uh, where we made a lot of use of our guns. We didn't get a lot of torpedo hits, but we did get a few in there that um, definitely puts the hurt on with those deep water torpedoes. Then your propulsion, 50,000 horsepower, getting you up to 37.5 knots for maximum speed. Not taking into account the Sierra Mike combat signal flag, which gives you a little boost, uh, or using the consumable, the engine boost, right? So looking at upgrades, uh, we're going to recommend going for the main armaments modification 1. It reduces the risk of your main battery and your torpedo tubes from becoming incapacitated by negative 20%. And then your survivability of the main battery and torpedo tubes go up by plus 50%. And then the repair time for both is reduced by negative 20% if they should become incapacitated. You don't go for auxiliary armor modification 1. You don't have a secondary battery on Xin Yang. And your AA, it's okay, but you're not playing Xin Yang for an AA build. That's something more uh, like the kid. Uh, the tier 8 premium uh, American destroyer. Yeah, magazine modification 1, it reduces your risk of your ship's magazine detonating by negative 70%. But if you've been around on the channel long enough now, you know I recommend you that you take the Juliet Charlie combat signal. Um, 
I run this in ranked, randoms, clan battles. I don't run it in co-op um, or ops because you can't detonate in operations um, unless they've changed that. Um, so this is where very helpful and that means that you get to free up a upgraded slot and instead just take main armaments modification one. Slot two, things a little bit spicy here. Um, you have your damage control system modification one. You don't really run this on destroyers, more of a cruiser or battleship. Engine room protection, this is, you really wanna take this um, because it reduces the risk of your engine and steering gear some becoming incapacitated by ne negative 20%. And if they do get knocked out, uh, it reduces the repair time by also negative 20%. Now, we also get the options of this engine boost modification one. It's a special upgrade that you find in the armory uh, that you purchase for with coal, as well as the surveillance radar modification. And we'll talk about that when we look more closer at these two consumables. For the third slot, um, main battery modification two, you, don't, you already have great Turret Traverse Beyond Sin Yang, you don't need to take this. Again, you're not an AA destroyer, you don't need this. Um, what you are looking at taking is either the Aiming Systems Modification 1 or the Torpedo Tubes Modification 1. Um, the Aiming Systems Modification 1, uh, the maximum main battery shell dispersion is reduced by negative 7%. Um, there's also a secondary battery buff, but again, you don't have secondaries on Sin Yang. And your Torpedo Traverse Speed is improved by plus 20%. Why I tend to take this on my hybrid destroyers is because you're getting tighter shell groupings. The smaller the dispersion, uh, the more accurate your shells are going to land on when you're firing on enemy ships. So that's my uh, big thing with the aiming systems modification one and taking it on most all my hybrid destroyers. You can also look into taking torpedo tubes modification one if you want a little bit more of a torpedo build with Cian Yang. Um, your torpedo speed is going to go up by plus 5%, so I think that's going to get you, um, let's see, that should get you to 62 knots, uh, roughly, because right now you're 59 knots, so it should be around 62 knots, and you also get to the torpedo tube's traverse speed, plus 20%, same as here, um, and then the risk of your torpedoes uh, becoming incapacitated is reduced by negative 40%. In the battles I played with C and Yang, there have been... Let's say if I played 15 battles, I think twice, maybe I've had my torpedoes uh, incapacitated. So um, that's really up to you. Uh, but I lean more towards kind of investing in the guns. And you got to see me use the guns a lot yesterday um, in Friday's Futured Battle of the Sea and Yang. Slot 4, you have Damage Control System Modification 2. Again, this is something you see much more on cruisers and battleships uh, where, um, you know, you're big, you're bulky, you, you're likely to be detected a lot. Um, where you're, you're a destroyer, seeing Yang, your 5.8 kilometer uh, detectability range. So you're running around the map, not detected very often, so it's kind of a waste to take this. Instead, what you want to take is either the propulsion modification one or the steering gears modification one. I personally favor the propulsion modification one uh, because uh, what it does is it reduces the time to full speed. Uh, it takes off 50%. Um, so you're reaching full engine power quicker if you say at a, a standstill and there is an enemy destroyer that comes in and then all of a sudden you got to move or you're trying to avoid torpedoes. Um, you get out of the way quicker. Uh, if you're open gunboating, you can kind of slow down, speed up quicker. That's kind of the reason why I like that. The same can be said with steering gears modification one. It helps you avoid torpedoes a little bit better perhaps. Uh, or if you are open gunboating, you know, further back at range, uh, you're a, bit, a little bit more slippery, harder to hit. And this is really where uh, the Sin Yang plays really similar to the Benson, okay? So look at the turning circle radius and the rudder shift time. And as we switch over to Benson, 38, 570, 2.7. So a slightly better rudder shift time here uh, on the Benson. But they play very similar in how they feel. When I'm playing ben uh, Sin Yang, it reminds me of my time in playing Benson. Um, just a little bit difference there on the rudder shift time and five knots slower um, here with C and Yang. Uh, then the depth charges, that's, we have two patches right now without submarines because this video is being recorded as of update 11.0. Um, if we get two additional charges, eh, you don't really need that. These two are much more uh, worth your money. Slot five, uh, torpedo lookout system. No, you don't. Not going to take down C and Yang. 
What you really want to take is the concealment system modification one. That's what allows you to get down to that 5.8 kilometers because I have concealment expert mastered on the commander and I have a camouflage right now on senior and getting us down to that 5.8. And retractability range, 2.3, uh, also really nice. Um, so that helps you be more nimble because your AA is, I think, 5.8. Yeah, firing range. So a lot of times I'm running around the map with my AA off uh, to get me down to that 2.3. And I only turn it on when it's necessary or the CV is, is indeed in detecting me with his planes. You have steering gears modification too. If you want to be a little bit more slippery, this is something you see more on a gunboat type destroyer. Um... I don't know how much I would really recommend taking this on the scene Yang. And then you have ship consumables modification, which increases the action time of your smoke, radar, or engine boost by plus 10%. But still, I'm not sure how sold on that I am. So let's go ahead and talk about um, the upgrades, or not upgrades, the consumables. So you have your standard damage control party, five second action time for a destroyer, reload time, 40 seconds. But then this is where things get interesting because on the Cian Yang, once you hit tier eight on the Panda Asian destroyer line, uh, you can choose between smoke generator or surveillance radar. Um, the smoke generator is very, it reminds you again, kind of of the American destroyer smoke. Um, the consumable action time is the same as on Benson, but the smoke screen dispersion time and the reload time are different. So smoke screen dispersion time here is 70 seconds. I think on my Benson, it's 124 seconds. And the reload time here, 100 seconds. We're on Benson, it's closer to two minutes. So, cause you get five charges, we're not even taking a uh, superintendent. Uh, you get five of these charges and I'm often using them uh, for my teammates where I'm putting it down for uh, a cruiser teammate on my flank. Um, because with Xi and Yang, when you are bottom tier, you're facing higher tiered uh, ships uh, and even same tier, um, you want to be able to keep your teammates alive. So if a gunboat destroyer pops up in front of you, um, they can help you take him out where you might struggle a little bit more with that because you only have four turrets uh, that reload every 3.3 seconds. Um, so I like to use my smokes for my friendlies a lot. Uh, and also, you saw in yesterday's video, I used islands too, so I didn't have to utilize uh, the smokes as much for myself. Um, so using islands is always helpful to save more, more of your smoke screens if you need them later on. Then you get the surveillance radar. It has a 7.5 kilometer detection of ships. Uh, consumable action time is 20 seconds. The reload time is two minutes, and you get three of these charges. Um, and Monday's uh, battle, which I've already recorded, uploaded to YouTube. It's just scheduled to go live on Monday. Um, I use all three charges uh, of the surveillance radar. Um, and I didn't need really more anymore after that, um, just with how that battle in particular went. Um, but this is where it kind of ties in when we were talking about um, the uh, other upgrade options. If you took surveillance radar modification one, it uh, increased the action time by plus 20%. Uh, so when we're looking at a 20 second, you're gonna go from 20 seconds to 24 seconds. So you have a slightly longer lasting uh, radar. So I have a hard time recommending running a radar build on the C and Yang. Uh, because there are other ships that do that job better. Um, I'm thinking of uh, the Orkin. It's a tier eight destroyer that runs radar and it has more guns, uh, more DPM, but not as many torpedoes. I think it only gets four torpedoes. Um, and then when you're bottom two, you run something like the Ragnar. Does it, Ragnar doesn't have any torpedoes, but it has uh, trollish armor. It's really hard to damage. Um, and then super accurate guns. Uh, on top of having the radar itself. So if you're running to run a radar destroyer, I don't feel like, I can't e easily recommend doing it on scene Yang. Um, the way I play radar on scene Yang is you have to know when to pop it, when to pop radar and when to fire because when you don't have smoke, uh, if you get caught out with your pants down, uh, things can go very poorly for you when not having smoke screen to go dark as an example. 
Um, but what I find myself doing with the radar is I use it when I know I have some friendlies around that can, let's say, deal with a destroyer in a smoke screen, or if that destroyer is low enough on health and I feel confident that I can trade uh, my health pool enough to kill him, um, then that's when I find myself using the surveillance radar. Otherwise, I feel like the smoke um, is all around much better. Um, but you might find maybe radar is not so bad if you know how to utilize islands well. Maybe you utilize a friendly smoke screen, uh, things of that nature. So, But when you run radar in Xi'an Yang, it's kind of like the Minotaur. People don't always expect it. So that's what I'll say about that. And then you have the engine boost. Again, uh, we have a option here to get the special upgrade of extending the action time by plus 30%. Um, so right now our action time is 120 seconds. Uh, so then you can get that up uh, 30%, what, more like 150 seconds, something like that. I'm just going off the top of my head. I wasn't great at math in college or school, so <laughs> don't take my word for it. I'm much more like using calculators. But uh, here for the scene, Yang, um, I don't know how much... I fancy engine boost, uh, taking that modification when you can keep your engine alive, or if you're running a radar build, then ideally, if you get four extra seconds with this, that means you get one more additional volley off, or your teammate might get that extra volley off enough to kill that enemy destroyer or cruiser in a smoke screen, as an example. Um, so let's go ahead and dive into our commander. So I have a unique commander, special commander. Uh, I'm not even going to try to pronounce his name, but you can grab him in the armory. Uh, you can buy, there's one that has the same uh, enhanced skills as this guy, one for coal, 35,000 coal, the other one for 1,500 doubloons. So I have got him on my destroyer because he has the enhanced skill of survivability expert. So instead of having a 350 HP increase for each ship tier, he has an enhanced of plus 400 for a destroyer. And so for me, this is uh, means that I'm going to be able to stay in the battle much longer because when you take 50 times it by 10, I, got, I just gave myself 500 uh, HP uh, additional health, uh, getting us up to that overall uh, 18,700 instead of what, being at 18,200? Um, I did my math right. Um, so I got him when I began going up the Pan-Asian uh, destroyer line. He comes with 10 points. So if you're just kind of wondering uh, where he's at, let me just show you real quick. Uh, and then his other counterpart. So commanders, Pan-Asian. So yeah, I got him for 1,500 doubloons. And then there's another one uh, for 35,000 coal. And he has the same uh, skills. So that's where you were finding them at. So uh, the other enhanced skill is Demolition Expert. I don't know, I'm not planning to take this on my overall commander build and we can get a little bit more into that. The enhanced skill here is instead of a 1%, it's a 1.5% uh, chance of causing a fire on target. Get some water here. All right, so uh, as a 10 point um, build, I'm going to recommend the bread and butter build. And those of you who subscribe been around long enough. Now the bread and butter build is this. So it's first preventive maintenance, uh, reduces your risk of modules from becoming incapacitated by negative 30%. So this is things like your main turrets, your torpedo tubes, steering gear, engine gears. Um, so that's really important to take because again, maneuverability and keeping your armaments online is important. For a three point commander, last stand, what this does, if your engine or your steering gears get knocked out, you can still um, have speed, you still have a rudder, uh, but at a penalty. So you're not as maneuverable, you don't have as much speed when your engine is knocked out, versus if you don't take this skill, you could just be going around in circles if your rudder gets knocked out, your steering gears, or if your engine gets knocked out, you're a sitting duck. So you wanna take last stand. Survivability expert, um, and with this commander in particular, you can see that we're getting that much more out of him here. Really helpful and important. So this is a six point build, a 10 point build. That's when I recommend you go for concealment expert because it gets you down to that 5.8 kilometers. 
Um, after that, what I have done is for a 13 point commander, I took Adrenaline Rush. For each 1% of HP loss, uh, your main battery reloads faster, your torpedoes reload faster, um, your continuous AA damage goes up by plus 0.20%. So to me, this is uh, quite nice. You'll see in uh, like Monday's video, I lose a good chunk of my health and you'll be seeing how my guns reload that a little bit faster and torpedoes reload that a little bit faster. Um, so it pairs well when you go into either a torpedo build or a more of a gun build um, with uh, C and Yang. So as a 16 point commander, I've taken fill the tubes. Uh, this gets us down to that negative 10% torpedo tube reload time. Um, so if you're wondering, hey, I was, when you were doing the beginning of the video, it didn't match up with mine, it's because I filled the tubes. Uh, it brings us down uh, to that uh, reload time of 105.3 seconds. Um, otherwise, without that, uh, I think it's closer, would it be 120, 115 seconds, something like that. Um, so this is really nice, especially when you're kind of the last guy standing on your flank, which <laughs> that's been me and Cien Yang and the, the battleships are pushing in, and I'm just dumping torpedoes into their side um, as they come in. Maybe you still lose the battle, but I get a lot of damage and additional experience for that. So that's why I really like uh, running fill the tubes. Um, from this 16 point uh, spot, um, what I'm leaning towards, and I'm still in discussion with myself about this, okay? But as I talk, I'll probably find more of where I'm leaning towards. Um, is the main battery and AA specialist. Uh, your main battery reload time is reduced by negative 5%. So that means now it's having a 3.3 second reload. We have a 3.2 second reload. You have to add adrenaline rush in there. You can be getting down to 2.9 seconds as an example. Um, your AA defense, your continuous damage goes up by plus 12. Not that it's a big thing. Um, I just get faster reloading guns. Um, that's kind of the, the perk there. Your HE shell uh, or fire setting chance um, is 5%. Um, so that is something to keep note of. Not the highest for a destroyer. I think Kulsik is something more like 8 or 9%. Maybe it's even higher. Um, this guy. He's fun. Um, and then Swiftfish. Okay, so let's see how much faster torpedoes go once you throw this on. So 59 knots to 62 knots. And then we're, how we're talking about uh, the equipment slot. If you ran torpedo tubes modification. Uh, so 62 knots, add this on 65 knots. Uh, 65 knot torpedoes. Um, that's what you could possibly uh, potentially be looking at uh, when taking this type of build. Because you can see we are definitely investing in the torpedoes here. We're also investing in the guns. Um, this is what, in my mind, I'm leaning towards right now. Um, it does not bug me as much because you get five smoke screens already uh, with the C and Yang, and you get three radars where something where you think, oh, maybe superintendent's nice, right? So instead of three engine boosts, I get four engine boosts. I've not run out of engine boosts yet with C and Yang. Um, and if you're running more of a radar build, then it could be superintendent is for you. But that means you are trying to focus more on the guns. And with this build, you can see I can't get uh, quicker reloading guns, but I still can get uh, faster torpedoes uh, with Swiftfish. So that is another build option. So I'll highlight the different builds of what, of what I'm thinking here. So this is what I lean towards now. I'm getting a little more out of the guns and I'm getting more out of the torpedoes. Uh, at the same time, if you want to do more of a radar build, if you want to go hardcore with a radar build, okay, you could do this and then take this. Then you are getting a longer action time, average surveillance radar by plus 10%. So let's say you took that uh, special upgrade in slot two, and then you take this plus 10%, uh, see so 24 knots. Uh, 24 seconds, 24, that means you're adding uh, 2.4 seconds. So then that gets you to over 26, 26.4 uh, seconds uh, in taking this. So then you're actually getting kind of close to um, 
some of the standard action time of radars in the game. Uh, I'm thinking more American cruisers where they have usually more standard around 30 seconds, okay? So you could um, do that. If you are gonna go for a radar build, what I would say is, is drop, fill the tubes and take the guns. Um, that's what I would recommend because if you want to really play Xin Yang for radar build, that means you're you're essentially taking this hybrid destroyer and you're trying to invest more into the gun. So don't take fill the tubes, take main battery and AA specialist. Okay. Um, you could do that. If you want to do more of a torpedo build, you could go up the full scale here. We also increase your chances of causing flooding by plus 30%, and that's hurts enemy ships really bad. They do take a lot of damage in while they flood, and they also lose speed. And then if I did that, you could take priority target. Uh, detection of indicating uh, additional ship shows a number of opponents on the enemy team that are currently aiming at your ship with their main battery guns. Or, or you could take Demolition Expert um, to get that increased fire setting chance where now you're at 6.5% and then you can't forget about the combat signals. You take these two, go back to the commander. Now we're at a 7.5% uh, chance of causing a fire. So you can be a little bit more trollish. It'd be interesting to see on the Chung Mu and the Yu Yang what their HE fire setting chances. And if uh, that is still a possible build option, especially with this commander, uh, for those two destroyers. So, yeah, you're being a little more trollish. Try and get some more fires. Try and get some more floodings. Um, other types of builds. Mm. Yeah, I'm not seeing it as much. Um, because there's just other destroyers that can fulfill the role of having RPF, radio location. Those are more gunboat destroyers that run RPF. Um, this is something more you would see on a gunboat destroyer, trying to get more range. So yeah, so I feel pretty confident in those uh, choices that I showed you. So um, let's say you want to do a standard investment in the main battery and the torpedo tubes. This is what I would recommend. Let's say you want to do more of a radar build, then take these. So you get an additional radar, you get four radars instead of three. You drop fill the tubes, pick up main battery and AA specialist. If you want to invest more in torpedoes, um, go all the way up. And then if you need priority target, because you don't feel like you're an as aware player, um, when you're lit, detected just expect that you're going to get shot i mean in yesterday's video you can see i was right in front of the alabama and he fired a salvo over me he could have killed me if he would have focused on me instead of the ships behind me um so it's just and expect when you're detecting a destroyer that you're going to get shot at but uh it's not always the case right um or you could take demolition expert and get increase your flooding chance increase your fire setting chance uh, again it'll be interesting on chung mu and yu yang what they're HE, uh, their fire setting chances. So those are the builds I would say I'd feel comfortable with recommending uh, here on the CN Yang. Again, overall, I don't know how much the CN Yang is really a radar destroyer, um, just because she's she's not a gunboat destroyer. She's a, a hybrid, and she struggles. But when she, especially if she runs, if you make a radar build out of CN Yang, um, and then you get bottom tiered. And then all of a sudden you're facing uh, tier, destroyer, tier 10 destroyers, tier 9 destroyers. Um, you're going to most of the time lose those fights unless you have a teammate backing you up. That's just kind of my concern when you're not top down. But when you are tier 8 matchmaking or you're top tier versus tier 6, uh, then the radar becomes probably a little bit more trollish, right? So why well, don't take some of these other skills? I'll try to do this quickly. You already have great main battery traverse speed. We talked about liquidator. Your guns already load really quick. Why take gun feeder? Incoming fire alert. Um, I couldn't really see a way to build, fit that in. Yeah. But it is a decent one point skill, but preventive maintenance is even better. 
We talked about these guys. Uh, extra heavy ammunition. Nah, there's, you can get more money's worth out of these other skills versus the extra heavy ammunition. Uh, this is something that like uh, on Elbing I would run um, because that has really hard hitting AP. German tier 10 destroyer. Talked about prior target, we talked about these. IFHE, you don't cross any important thresholds uh, with these 127 millimeter guns to pin anything higher. Um, it's not so like the six inch guns, like uh, Wooster guns. That's, I run IFHE on Wooster. Um, and I know some people who run this on Japanese gun butt destroyers, but that's a story for a different time. We talked about superintendent. Um, we talked about main battery A expert, Swift and Silence. Yeah, I would rather use my commander skills to invest more in the type of other builds I showed you. Same thing with radio location, fearless brawler. You're not a gunboat destroyer. Um, so I don't really see this being important just to get a quicker reload time after ship has been detected by the enemy. Um, not here. That's more of a gunboat build. Okay. Dazzle. I've talked about Dazzle before. To me, Dazzle does not do enough for me to warrant investing for commander skill points because this is only, um, in effect for 15 seconds after you've been detected. So if you keep being detected longer than 15 seconds, this skill completely evaporates. There are times I'm very conscious of can be activated skills. Wargaming has introduced more of these can be activated skills since uh, the commander rework uh, update 10.0. But that really covers everything that I wanted to discuss here on the CN Yang. Um, I've had a fun time with her, especially with the torpedoes, um, how heavy hard hitting they are. And if you like the American destroyer line, I'm pretty sure that you're gonna like uh, the Pan-Asian destroyer line because they, they play similarly, but the ship characteristics are definitely, there's some differences there. Um, but overall, the, the, the playing them, the smoke, the rudder shift time, the concealment, all really similar because, you know, this used to be an American destroyer, right? Um, historically speaking. So if you liked today's video, give it a thumbs up. If you did not, give it a thumbs down. Subscribe if you do want to see more. If you are subscribed, thanks so much. I really appreciate it as we continue growing the channel here with you. So until next time, take care.